Oh, so we've got a swarm up in here. That's why we keep these Jester nuke boxes around. Now, this is actually one of our swarms. It's one of our overflow yards. And when we were really getting uh, busy getting all the nukes ready for everyone, I knew we were probably going to lose some swarms for a yard or two. We just did not have a chance to get back around and uh, get it done. But sometimes that happens. Thankfully, there's one right here. We're going to go through the yard and see what's going on. Because the bees are already going to be pretty heavy. I'm guessing that's around four pounds of bees. Um, this is when it would be really handy to be a little bit taller because I am on a swarm trap box and even with all this extra lift here, I'm going all Tom Cruise with my, my lifts, I still can't quite reach this swarm. I'm going to be able to manage. This is why I've got the bee suit on though because there's a good chance a lot of these are going to be going right on top of me. Alright, here goes something. Ooh. Finally getting in the 80s though. I mean, goodness, it's been cool. The bees are loving this weather, so let's go like that. Stick them underneath. Come on, body. You know, I got a, most of them. Hopefully got the queen in there. There's still probably about a pint's worth of bees up on that limb. on there. Try not to break the lamp. You know, and if uh, there's no queen on here, which is it's pretty much a single layer of bees, and I'm just going to leave this here because they'll be able to go back and consolidate to the other colony. They'll probably be confused for a couple days, but they'll eventually drift back and just wonder what happened back to making some honey that's what they need to do we got a lot of catching up to do there's a little bit in that pocket right there you just don't want to miss those queens now i had one earlier this year that i caught um i don't know it was about two or three it was about three weeks ago actually and i saw the virgin queen march in left them alone for 14 days and she never came back and laid Sometimes that happens. Now, I have seen about two dozen tanagers in my yard migrating through, and they eat a ton of honeybees. And I don't mean just a little bit, a lot of it. So uh, maybe that's why she didn't come back. We had some really cold weather and some rain. Whatever the reason, she didn't come back. Those bees are completely going to die without some beekeeping intervention going on. I was able to drop in some cells, and now they have a laying queen from that uh, little five frame nuke that we're using. So. It's always handy to have some extra queens on hand right when you need them because you just never know when the need's going to arise. And um, there's a time clock that, that just goes rapidly. The older the bees get, the harder it is to fix the colony. And uh, I, just, I just love having queen cells. They're, they're awesome. But anyways, I don't see the queen up in here. Looks pretty good. See some fat drones looking for a handout. Let's uh, look in the nuke box and see what we got real quick. Feels pretty good. Kind of shaking at the bottom a little bit. Bunch of bees down in there. I'll right, shut them back up. Don't want to crush the queen on accident with the lid or something. All right, we've got them. Now we're going to take them back to the house and we'll show you what we do when we get over there. All right, so it's the next day. We are fixing to drop these bees in. It really got late by the time we got done weed eating and, and going to different bee yards. We used to have time to put the swarm in yesterday with enough daylight to show it in the video. So we have them in that Jester Easy Nuke box right there. This is what I've got set up. It's just a regular 10 frame hive. We have all kinds of foundations in here. There's a couple keys that I really like to focus on when it comes to having success keeping swarms in your boxes. Um, you can put brood in there. This is just an old um, swarm trap comb. I like giving them a little bit of uh, old comb smell you can give them brood I move them many miles so I don't have to worry about them um, I've never lost a swarm after moving it several miles sometimes I feel like people lose swarms because the, the cluster is already designated this is the cavity that we're fixing to go to they just haven't moved yet and if you keep them in the same location even if you put them in with brood I've had them leave brood behind before. It's not very common, but I really feel like if they're already 
inclined to go to a location that they're too far gone that stimuli is already set within them and and once the bees made up their mind there's not a whole lot you can do about it bees respond to stimuli so now they're in a completely new location they don't they've never seen any of this landscape before we're going to give them this nice comb right here which is going to give them some of that swarm trap feeling that oh this is it's a big cavity size there's some old comb here probably from a dead out we have foundations we'll be giving them feed because we only have about three weeks of flow left you know that's it's a bummer but that's just the reality of it this colony's not going to pack enough to go through our summer dearth which is going to go into late august and sometimes longer than that if the weather is bad so we're going to have to feed this colony in order for it to survive some people just think nature's going to just take care of this swarm. It's, it's, that's not going to happen. This colony's not going to make it without some beekeeper help. That's what beekeepers are for. So anyways, with all that said, let's throw them in here. All right, we got our fancy lid over here on the ground. Now what we're going to want to do is knock them to the bottom of the box, and then we're going to shake them out onto this. Now they're not going to really like it, but they have a strong exoskeleton for this purpose. These bees. Let's see if we can spot the queen. It's going to be pretty difficult. And let's just see what they do. I put the plywood here just so they wouldn't get lost in the grass so much. You know, they're flying a little bit, but they're really not doing a whole lot. Because they just... Poor things are confused. They've never been here before. Oh, 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 there she is right there. At least one of them. That's a virgin queen. See how small her body is? It is, is never laid before. All right, so we have a virgin queen. Oh, there she is again. The thing of it is, in virgin swarms, I mean, there, there could be 10 in here. I have caught virgin swarms the most I've ever found in a, a virgin swarm is nine virgins it was pretty interesting problem is I've already caught a virgin swarm this year and we left her alone for two weeks and she didn't come back the weather was very very poor for mating here we go so once the bees start fanning and spreading that pheromone you can see these bees right in here just fanning their wings tons of them the whole bit can smell that it's just absolutely amazing and just look at them go now since this is a virgin swarm I'm gonna give them a little feed here in a couple days but other than that I am NOT gonna be pulling frames for two weeks out of this thing you don't want to disturb virgin colonies sometimes in doing this they will um, kill the the queen in the process I don't know 100% why this is but Something changes with the pheromones a little bit, and oh, there they just really start going. Never gets old. If you're using a frame feeder like we are, you don't want to fill that up when you're hiving swarms or packages. They're not locked in. They don't behave the same as a colony that's starting to raise brood and pack away pollen and nectar. And many times, as they're cleaning the hive, running around, they will drown themselves in the feeders, especially packages. Because they're just running around, they, they fall down in that syrup, and then another one jumps on top of them, and you know they just end up drowning hundreds or thousands of them. But you wait till the hive's locked in good, doing what it's supposed to do. That'll probably happen in the next two or three days. These bees have tons of nectar socked away in their honey crop. Oh, and there's the virgin. There she is right there. And don't touch her because she might fly off. Virgins are very powerful flyers. Sometimes you'll get a swarm with the mated queen and when she takes off, it's like one of those uh, big helicopters flying overhead. It's just uh, kind of slow. Yeah, there's... 
she's a pretty good sized virgin right there. Once she comes back mated, as long as the bird doesn't get her, this colony is going to be in good shape. Always something exciting going on in the bee yard this time of the year. This is awesome. Now you're probably wondering why I have them on the ground. And that is due to, um, you know, just shaking them like this. If I had them up here on the stand, I could have this kind of ramped up, but I kind of prefer having it like this myself. Uh, once they're settled in, we'll drop them up here. It'll be just fine. And they'll be able to adjust to that no problem. Anyways, we'll let the bees work themselves in and um, we'll keep you up to date on when the queen comes back and lays and show you how much foundation they've drawn. I love giving foundation to swarms. It's a great time to get more new fresh combs because swarms are already inclined to do it. So you might as well give them foundations instead of combs. If you have any comments or questions on all this uh, exciting spring activity, leave them below.